So the first four episodes were very abstract. I felt like I needed to start with that stuff in order to orient you to where I'm coming from. Because otherwise what I'm doing just might not make much sense. I felt like we all needed some uh, philosophical context to get us on the same page. Now we can start diving into some fun details and practical conversations. First, let me see if I can succinctly wrap up the last four episodes in just a couple minutes. In episode one, I talked about how I think that the way our global civilization is currently arranged is terminally flawed. It was a good idea at the time, but we need to alter how we interact with each other and the world as a species now. And I'm actually not super bummed about this anymore. In fact, I'm excited about the opportunity of simply being alive in such an interesting time, a time when it's possible to have our actions count for so much. What we do matters now. That can be pretty heavy and overwhelming, but it's also this really beautiful call to action. In episode two, I said that the consumer mindset in particular has put us all into cognitive boxes with terrible unintended consequences for the planet and for our mental, physical, social, and spiritual health. I think we ought to do away with the consumer mindset as quickly as we can. And to the extent we unlearn consumerism in our personal lives, we free ourselves. A way to free ourselves from consumerism is to pursue broad skills, to become Renaissance people. Because abundance in our society is not just a function of money, like we're trained to think. Abundance is a function of money and skills. The more relevant skills you have, the less money you need to obtain the same level of abundance. So the more skills you have, the less money you need, the less you need to work. The more free time you have, the more you're able to develop skills, closing the loop and allowing you to ascend an upward spiral of autonomy and competent badassery. I called this the skill ratchet in episode three. This skill ratchet is what enables us to become broadly skilled non-consumers with enough free time and optionality to pursue our purpose and missions in life. For me, I think about my purpose in life in terms of the lifeboat flotilla, the, the metaphor I explored in episode four. At this point, the ship of industrial consumer civilization is going down. So, you know, I'm not interested in attempts to save it or argue about who should be captain next, that sort of thing. I am interested in building a lifeboat flotilla that we can all move to, a flotilla based on ways of relating to each other and to the rest of the world in a more functional way. So, all right, great. That's a nice set of principles, strategies, and a neat little story about a boat. Very tidy. But what does that look like? Or what can that look like? Where do we go from here? How is this relevant to deciding what to do next Tuesday? Well, it bears emphasis that it's sort of the point of all this, that it's a choose your own adventure. There's no one prescribed path. Everyone has different stoke to chase, and that's beautiful. So right now, in terms of nuts and bolts, maybe the best I can do is just talk about how I'm choosing to chase my stoke and how what I'm doing fits into all this theory. Later, soon, I want to start having conversations with other people who are chasing their stoke in some kind of alignment with the values and principles I'm talking about here. But for this episode, I'm going to talk about myself a bit. I'm Tyler Disney, and this is Advanced Retro Adaptics. Welcome. I've written stories since I was a kid, or rather, I've written ideas for stories since I was a kid, and I rarely ever finished anything. In a sense, I was just designing stories. At any rate, over a decade ago, I wrote in an idea for a webcomic I wanted to make. I called my idea The Wandering Engineer. The protagonist is this lone eco-engineer who wanders a post-collapsed North America, providing engineering design build services to homesteads, villages, and communities. So think Mad Max, but instead of killing people over gasoline, he helps design and build like Earthship kind of stuff. So for example, the engineer would show up to a place whose, let's say their, their constructed wetland was out of whack, or, or they needed help devising a better greenhouse design to in-source nutrient production 
or maybe they needed to rapidly build a bunch of solar water distillers out of scrap. Payment would be in coin or food and shelter or parts or feed oil for the engineer's biodiesel Toyota. I was really into making a biodiesel Toyota. So from time to time over the years, I tinkered with this idea. I filled out backstory. I spent time imagining what this future would look like, you know, climatologically and politically and socially. I even attempted to learn how to draw a few times so I could start producing the comic myself. I never really got too far with that. But then a few years ago, I thought to myself, huh, you know, I already live in a sort of unevenly distributed post-apocalypse. I'm already an engineer. I already have some experience building and making some stuff, and I want to learn even more myself. I realized that the webcomic idea wasn't a story I wanted to write. It was a story that I wanted to live and that I could live. I started to turn my attention to explicitly arranging my life in accordance with the, the gist of this wandering engineer idea. After all, the story was nothing more than an integration of my worldview in Stoke projected onto narrative. It's definitely taken some time to sort out the transition from idea for a webcomic that looks nothing like my actual life to integrated lifestyle and purpose, right? I started thinking about this seriously something like three or four years ago, and only in the past 12 months have I felt like my actual life is just beginning to overlap with the narrative that I have in mind. For a long time, I struggled because I just didn't have the free time to devote to this because I had a full-time job. The missing piece for me was learning the non-consumer praxis via Jacob Lund Fisker's work. Praxis is just a fancy word for practice, like doing stuff. As I learned how to live just as well or even better on a tenth of what I used to spend a year, I quickly saved up a financial buffer of several years. And, and let me tell you what a difference it makes in your, in your attitude when you know that if you lost your job tomorrow, you'd be just fine for like actual years. The proof, as they say, is in the pudding. Less than a year into learning non-consumer praxis, in the middle of 2020, I gave 80% of my job away in order to save my team. I, I dropped down to one day a week. Then in the middle of 2021, the final ax fell and my team was laid off. I didn't have a job anymore. If these events had happened even a year earlier, I'd have been really sweating it, scrambling to get a job to keep the income flowing because my expenses were so high. Instead, the first thing I did after getting laid off was to take a two-month-long road trip with my girlfriend through the Pacific Northwest. We slept in a tent every night in beautiful forests for free, spending money only on fuel and food. It was a really amazing time. Shortly after that, a friend in Oregon asked me to help them with their schoolie build. I rode my motorcycle up, taking my time and enjoying the Pacific Coast Highway, again sleeping in a tent in beautiful forests looking over the ocean, spending almost nothing. I stayed with my friends for two months in their spare room, working on their school bus, hanging out with their free-range kid, and earning a little bit of money. A bit after that, I decided to build a tiny studio on my parents' property in the desert with sheep's wool insulation, a green roof, and salvaged metal siding. That's what I did this past winter. Okay, so far so good, but that's a far cry from being highly competent at the kinds of projects I'm really interested in. I wanted to know how to build solar thermal systems, vertical axis wind turbines. I wanted to begin my collection of natural building skills and techniques. I want to build and operate living machines, which are like cultivated wetlands that treat waste water into water almost safe to drink. I want to build greenhouses that allow food to be grown year round, even in extreme environments. And I also want to learn about the social dynamics of living in groups of people, all with a somewhat similar vision for the future. You know, people bringing their own unique gifts to the task of building some corner of the lifeboat flotilla. I felt that I wasn't learning these skills or, or, or having these experiences fast enough. So in the midst of the Delta surge uh, in, in around February 2021, I was on the internet looking at flights a year into the future, and I found tickets to Lisbon for 150 US for February of 2022. So right now, 
I'm a month and a half into a one or maybe two year round the world trip, volunteering at eco projects to lend a hand and learn skills. At the moment, I'm staying in an actual treehouse on an off grid fab lab in the south of Portugal, working part time on building geodomes and solar thermal hot water heaters in exchange for a place to sleep and food. Last week, I used a custom built CNC machine to cut the pieces for the solar thermal collector and then helped build the foundation for a geodome. You can see pictures of these things on my website, tylerjdisney.com. There's anywhere between 6 and 12 other volunteers here at a time, all working on various projects. We have a shared kitchen, and we eat dinners together. I sleep in a treehouse with a cat and Jean, a French mechanical engineering graduate who was in charge of running the uh, geodome project here. Next week, I might head to Morocco, where I'm going to help a family renovate an old family building using traditional mud brick building techniques. My cost of living is tiny. I'll be posting cost details for those interested month by month, but I could do this for years if I wanted before I have to earn any more money. So to recap, I'm wandering the earth, spending very little, working on cool solar punk eco projects. My actual life now significantly overlaps with the story I wrote for myself all those years ago. And, and, and here's the critical point. It would not have been possible if I hadn't begun the very much still ongoing work to unlearn the consumer mindset, stop spending so much money, and skill up in the pursuit of becoming a broadly competent non-consumer. And hammer the final point sort of the point of episode four, it's not just that I'm living some random fantasy I wrote in my early 20s. I feel connected to my purpose, my stoke, my mission in life. Every day I wake up and I think about my to-do list and it feels relevant to why I'm actually alive, why I'm on this planet. It feels relevant to the lifeboat flotilla, to the project of having my actions mean something in the world. If you want to follow along, subscribing to my email newsletter at tylerjdisney.com is the best way. I sometimes make posts on Instagram, but that's pretty hit or miss, to be honest. The open source music is by Jason Shaw at audionautics.com. <laughs>